Hi artists, I wanna go over today the grid method technique that we're going to be utilizing this week in our class. Um, it is a method that is often used to take a smaller image and then enlarge it onto something uh, out of scale. So for example, a mural. So if I had this picture and I wanted to put it on the wall, I would grid this off, grid it on the wall, and then I could enlarge it. We're going to just use the technique to transfer one image into our own drawing. And so you're going to choose a winter scene from one of several Peanuts uh, Christmas and winter scenes, depending on what you'd prefer. Um, and then we're gonna grid it off and then duplicate it onto our own paper. And the way that you're going to start with that is with this printout. Um, I have a file in our Canvas assignment where you can choose one of, it's about 26 different scenes. If you don't have access to a printer, you let me know and I will get you one of them. But the first thing I'm going to do is I need to grid off my picture. And so the way that I do that is I'm gonna lay my ruler right on the edge of it. I noticed that my ruler, and everybody's ruler is gonna be a little bit different. My ruler actually has this little bit of extra before the inch starts, so I'm gonna lay that. Um, accordingly and I'm going to mark it off with a tick mark every three quarters of an inch so there and then three quarters uh, that will be a half and then I'm going to keep going all the way until I get to the edge of the picture and that should be about the last one okay and then I'm going to do the same technique the other direction so I'm going to lay my ruler and I'm going to do it three quarters again so that I have the ability, what I'm doing here of course is laying out um, my ability to make a grid. Okay, and this one's gonna be a little smaller. Those lines I will use to make straight lines. And so I'm going to line those up. I actually like to use the um, ruler. I'm actually slide my sketch a little bit so you can see the edge, there we go. I like to use my ruler against the edge of the paper. That way I make sure that I'm getting my line straight. Um, you know, the straightness of the line isn't necessarily going to affect your um, image, but I like to have them straight just because it keeps everything more precise for me. I'm gonna do it both directions. A second, I gotta scooch that so my ruler will work, there we go. So I'm gonna do it both horizontally and vertically. And then I'm actually gonna do the same thing on a piece of sketchbook paper. So I'm gonna open up my sketchbook here and I'm going to create a grid that is the same measurements as my picture, which happens to be four by six. It's a four by six inch um, rectangle. So I've got that gridded off, you can see here, and then this is one I've done, so I'm gonna open up to a fresh page, and all I'm going to do is, um, I used the side of it uh, just because I was making it really even, you can do whatever you want. So there's four, and there's six, and I'm going to make the rectangle so now it's the same as the image that I have. Now this picture was running vertically. I've also, I've chosen another one and it's running horizontally. So I'm just gonna flip my paper so that it's the same way. Now I'm gonna do the same technique as I did on my picture where I am marking off every three quarters of an inch. Da -da -da. A little math here in the making. So I'm gonna grid it off, do it the same way. And then what you're going to do is you're going to literally copy square for square. So one thing I wanna note on this is that in every other drawing exercise we've ever done, whether it was when you were in you know, first grade or as a middle schooler, um, I always say to you, you know, look carefully, follow the lines, look up, at, look down at your image, look up at your paper, like really observe. Um, this one is one where I'm gonna tell you to actually not do that at all. Um, I don't want you to try and draw the whole picture. That will be overwhelming in the sense that there's all these little details. Um, we did this technique, if you were with me in fourth grade, we did the same technique to creating Looney Tunes and it's the same, exact same method. But what I mean by that is, 
rather than like looking at this and going, okay, I'm gonna draw a Snoopy and I'm gonna draw his house. I don't want you to do that. What I want you to do is take each individual square and copy it. So like my first square, I know there isn't anything, so I'm not gonna put anything there. I'm gonna go down to the next square and in the next square, I notice that, make sure I'm on the camera here. I notice that the only thing I see is a little bit of the cloud. Let's see if I can have these things bump up at the same time. And so I'm going down to square number two and one thing I will tell you, this helps some people. Some people um, don't want to do it, so I'm going to let you choose. If it helps you to like number this, like one, two, three, all the way across, and then one, two, three, all the way down, and then do the same on your grid here, you can do that. Um, and that way you can be like, okay, square one, nothing. Square two, I have this. And then all I'm gonna do, guys, is I'm gonna continue on and I literally follow the square. So on this one, back up here, what I did on this guy, and I'll tell you, this it takes a little bit of time, but not as much time as you think when you start. Because at first you start, and you're like, oh my goodness, there's so many details. But once you get kind of the big shapes down, it goes pretty quick. I think this this took me under an hour. Um, and you you all draw way better than I do, so you'll you'll be good to go on this. But what I wanted to do is I need to start at the top. Now I typically start um at the left-hand side because I'm right-handed, so I kind of look at these first squares first. If you're left-handed, you might do vice versa. But either way, you really wanna start at the top and kind of work down. So I just looked at each square, and for me, the first place I started was Snoopy's nose right here, and I just followed this. And that's what I did for each square, and literally each square was its own thing. So. When I got into like the present, I was like, oh my goodness, how will I do the present? But see, I was doing the thing I'm telling you not to do. Don't look at the present. You can't think of it as the present. You have to think of it as this square and this square and this square. And the great thing about this is that you're doing it in pencil. So if you do, like I know that when I started this Snoopy's nose, I had this a little bit too big, like I had it out here, just erased it and readjust it. You may need to do adjustments. You may need to change the size. That's the reason you're doing the grid method so that if you needed to sort of check the proportions, you could do that. Um, work your way from the top to the bottom and getting all those little details, making sure that each square is matching each square. And that's what I, how I sort of do it as a midway checkpoint, I'll stop and I'll start counting like, okay, how many squares down am I? How many squares over to make sure I'm on? Because sometimes I will have gotten off and I need to kind of back up and get back on. You really want to make sure that you're staying with the squares because um, if you don't, you may still have the drawing looking accurate, but what happens is as you work your way down, if your proportions are off, um, it makes the things on the bottom um, difficult to fit in because maybe you've lost some of the, of the space up there. So you want to follow each square not the whole picture, okay? Um, I think that you'll really enjoy this. It is a great technique, not just for this project, but for any time you need to transfer something. As I said, whether you're transferring it onto a wall um, to do a mural, or if you just need it on a larger piece of paper, this is a great technique. When you are done um, with the image, you can, of course, go back and erase your grid, and then use a Sharpie to outline it and color it in, and you will have a fabulous Peanuts um, winter scene. So I'll go over this in class as well, but I just wanted you to have a video in case you needed to just go back and do a refresher. Um, I'll see you in class. Thanks, bye.